Sorry, what was the one before? Did I say that one? Did you miss one? No. Well, anyway. <laughs> no, right, next one. <laughs> so now the um, International Corporate Governance Network basically blames the regulators. It says this recession has been because no one has regulated the banks. The banks have got out of control. The banks have done exactly what they want to do. And really, it's all down to the regulators. So there's a big lesson here for the regulators. What are the regulators going to do to ensure that this doesn't happen again in future? Banks took on excessive leverage and um, shareholders, especially the hedge funds, which I'll come to in a minute, also may be to blame. Yes. So who did gain? Well, first of all, the hedge funds gained. They're now losing lots of money. In the last few months, we've seen them losing lots of money. But up until like last year, hedge funds were making lots and lots of money. And so were the private equity firms. In the UK, we've had the private heads of private equity firms going, being hauled in front of the government to explain themselves. You know, they're perceived as not helping society, not helping business, and they're just in for quick gains. So they've had a lot of grilling by um, the UK government, certainly. So hedge fund managers gained. Those who sold property during the bubble, so like lots of people I know, their parents are sitting on lots of money because their parents have gained from this. Companies who raised finance too cheaply and raised finance because like it was very cheap, but maybe they didn't need to have done that. And obviously those people in the banks who were being incentivized to lend at these cheap rates. Who lost? We all lost. Our governments lost and we have all going to loss. First of all, in tax. Secondly, the shareholders have lost in a lot of these organizations that are going bust, not just the banks. And bank employees who are all being made unemployed. But the more that we see this going into the commercial sector, we're finding more and more companies will go out of business, and so we will find more and more unemployment. So any one of us could be out of a job, um, you know, tomorrow, next week, next month, next. Um, what about the financial impact in Latin America? Well, the financial problem really arose in the Western developed countries. It was the Western banks that took on all this excess leverage that had all these complex products. The banks in Latin America weren't as bad as um, in the West. So it's unlikely that Latin America is going to be as badly affected. And if you look at the capital adequacy ratios of the banks in Latin America, they're actually quite healthy, especially when compared to Western society. Now, I, look, I try to find um, the cat capital adequacy ratios for um, countries in Latin America, and I looked at quite a lot of different sources, and they were all completely different. Um, so, like, some of them showed Colombia as being up at 14, um, a level of 14%. So, these are probably the more pessimistic ones, but I think generally capital ad adequacy ratios of Latin American banks show that the banking system here is much, much sounder. And if it's sounder, it's still going to be lending money to businesses. So businesses here in Colombia and the Andean region can still grow, whereas in the US and the UK, um, really there's a lot of stagnant companies at the moment. What about um, the general situation in Latin America? Well, first of all, GDP growth has been quite strong recently um, in this region of the world. Um, you've got some good businesses, some niche businesses. So Colombia is famous for its coffee, and I've absolutely enjoyed the coffee since I've been here. In fact, I've asked for a cup of coffee just now and said, oh, well, there wasn't any. Um, also, the flower business is really good. You're renowned for having the best flowers in the world. So, you know, you've got some businesses where you already have a comparative advantage over other countries. Um, so I think that at the end of the day, Latin America can actually gain from this situation. You know, on the world and global stage, Latin America should take advantage of this. The banks should increase their lending to companies. 
Companies should increase their investment. They should look for growth. So I think Latin American companies and the entrepreneurs here should really think about what they're doing and you know, maybe try and make a bigger impact on the world stage. And that should be done as a region as well. But what you need to do about is focus more on risk management. I'll say more about that. But for growth, you do need stable exchange rates, um, stock markets that are quite healthy where investors want to invest. And unfortunately, Latin America hasn't got there yet. If we look at the volatility of stock exchanges in this region, we can see, for example, um, in Peru, the, the difference between the high and low this year, I did these numbers a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, it's been quite volatile, and so has Colombia, whereas Venezuela has been um, less volatile. Now, in the Western stock markets, they have also been this volatile. So we haven't had stable stock markets in 2008 anywhere. So it's not just because of Latin America where you've had these bad rates, the volatility in stock markets has impacted globally. But just to show you that at the moment, even here, you don't have stable stock markets. There's a lot of volatility. So a lot of investors are going to be put off investing. They are not going to want to invest just yet. So this growth here in this region may not occur immediately. If we look also at the exchange rate, um, against the dollar for this year. Well, you know, this region is renowned for always having weak exchange rates. Um, so again, how the financial crisis will impact on exchange rates going forward needs to be taken into account. In my own case, um, I come from the UK, and sterling, which is my currency, has depreciated against the dollar dramatically. You know, a few months ago, I was getting $2 to the pound. I'm now lucky if I get uh, $1.50 to the pound. So, you know, even a major economy like the UK has seen a massive decline in its exchange rate just in the last two months. So it's, again, all over the world that this has been happening. Um, now, I want to move on to global investors because global investors are really important. Um, you know, they're the ones who are investing in businesses. And we've seen the rise of pension funds and hedge funds and private equity and whatever. So we are really seeing big global investors now. Um, but these global investors are now retrenching back to their home bases. And they're going to invest much less globally and especially in emerging markets than they did before. So what this region needs to do is sort of show why it is worthy of investment from the reduced investment that is going to be made by these big global financial institutions. So um, what companies here need to do is to think about, well, do they want investment by overseas companies. Now, in the past, we had like hedge funds who were only in it for short-term gains. They were not in it for the long-term benefits of companies. But some international investors are there for the good of the company. They do want to be long-term investors. And if they do want to be a long-term investor, then companies should take advantage of it. These investors can bring contacts that may not have been available before. They might have advice. They might have good people to advise on management and opportunities and things like that. So I think companies here need to see do you want an international partner to take an investment? And if so, is it going to be a long-term partner? Because you, what you want is a long-term investor who can really hope businesses grow. Now, within the invest, international investment community, there's been a growth in um, socially responsible investment. And the UN and various organizations have got together to say, well, we should really increase our investment. So the UN Global Compact has got 500 companies signed up to it um, with its 10 um, principles of corporate responsibility. 